Welcome to another session of Teams in 20. Today is the start of our new little mini series on Teams telephony or our Teams phone system. So we're going to take you on a little journey over the next few episodes where we're going to start you off very basic with phone, what is Teams phone, uh, how do you make internal external calls, maybe look at some voicemail, um, look at also some of those uh, actual features that hid in a way that people maybe are, are not aware of. And then we're going to progress through the box set and uh, we're going to get a little bit more advanced as we go. Now, to help us on our journey today, I have brought in the big guns. Uh, today, we have Tina Shepherd, who is a veteran of uh, Converge Comms Teams Telephony at, at Microsoft with I won't embarrass her on exactly how many years, but let's just say it's over 20. And what Tina doesn't know about uh, telephony is not worth knowing. So I am going to hand straight over to Tina to, to get us started. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, over to you, Tina. Oh, thanks, Joe. Oh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity uh, to take everybody through uh, Team Phone. And we're going to go through a, a, a number of those scenarios um, across the series. So thank you. It's a really, I'm really privileged to do this. Um, so hi, everybody. This is my demo, demo tenant. Um, and most people, you kind of know, this is Microsoft Teams. And of course, um, how am I going to show you how to do an internal call? Well, at the top, I'm going to actually uh, reach out to Alex. Um, so here I'm going to reach out to Alex. And most people you probably are familiar with, you'll probably start a, ch a chat down at the bottom. But to do an internal call, um, I'm actually going to go up to here at the top button and actually select audio call. Now, of course, I can uh, press that button. It will ring Alex and he'll answer. And of course, it will just be an audio call or I can elevate it and make it a video call if needed, but very, very easily. That's exactly how I do an internal call. The other piece that I can also do is um, if you've uh, if you've been in a situation where maybe you're uh, talking to a customer or a supplier and maybe you're playing a bit of voicemail tag. So, for example, you call them, you leave a message, they call you back, they leave a message, you call them back again you are playing a bit of voicemail tag with them. Now, if that organization also uses Microsoft Teams, you can actually do a trusted connection. We call that a federated calling. So on here, you can see I've got, um, I can see myself and I can see Joe, um, but they're not actually in my organization. This is, um, I'm using Contoso um, as my tenant, but I am federated using that trusted connection with Microsoft. So very quickly, I can do an instant message or chat with Joe, but I can also see her presence. So like um, traffic like system, uh, uh, red, amber, green, I can actually see very quickly if Joe is online, if she's available or on a call. And I could then, if I wanted to, maybe politely do an IM first before um, actually calling that person. And therefore, I'm not actually playing voicemail tag with my um, with my uh, external party. So I can actually be a lot more pr productive um, and move on with my day. So um, yeah, that's, a, that's an example of where you can do external calling. So if I think about how I use this in my day to day, I have lots of customers that I look after and those customers, um, I tend to, I, I can swap tenants to go and, and speak to them. But ideally, if they're federated, so we've got that secure connection, I can just look them up. And if the red dot's there, then OK, maybe leave it to later. But if the green dot's there, I'm good to go. I can just call that person up and hopefully they'll, they'll, pick, they'll <laughs> pick up the phone to me. Exactly. Just like um, anybody else would do um, in calling people and using Microsoft Teams. It's just a great way of saving money, but also um, staying in the flow of work. You know, saving time. Keeping in yeah. Microsoft Teams. Yeah. So another question for you, Tina. Um, yeah. I suppose one thing I really like is the ability to notify me when people are free. Mm -hmm. um, I know I could do that internally. So in your 
on your site though if you click on alex you can do that yeah, notify, when, notify available. when available yeah is that is I, that possible on federated or no, no it's not it's not available on on federated contact so um great feature though but um that's hopefully we'll put some more um put some more feedback into the product group too yeah uh, yeah to do that. but it's a great feature for those internal calls mm -hmm. Yes. Especially when you don't want to keep you don't want to keep chasing and seeing if anybody's available. So yeah, brilliant. Exactly. Did you know that Microsoft Teams can also replace your physical desk phone? Um, and if you're very lucky and you have the license that uh, allows you to do this, so it's an add-on Team Phone add-on license or the Microsoft E5 license, you'll see that this particular icon, the calls button will in fact, um, when you click on it, will actually have a keypad, um, which is very, um, which is touchable. So you can use to dial the number, but also you'll have a telephone number uh, assigned to you. If you don't have a number assigned, uh, please contact your IT organization, but this will allow you to receive incoming and outgoing calls. Before I make an outbound call or receive an incoming call um, to show you what that looks like, um, I just want to take you around um, the screen a little bit so that you can see uh, what is um, what what it actually provides. Um, most of the time when you have a phone on the desk uh, next to you, uh, think about that taking up space. You know, wouldn't it be nice to get a little bit of real estate back from your desk? Um, and on the phone itself, you would have seen things like your missed calls. Um, so here on the client, you can actually see any missed calls um, that have called you and you've missed. Um, you'll be able to filter your incoming calls or um, view your voicemail um, or just seeing all of your history call or received an incoming call you'll be able to view all of that um, and of course you know that would have been uh, previously available on the handset now it's available on your desktop and of course you can do very quick um, you can call that person directly back um, or you can re-ring them again if needed at a one click dial um, you also have speed dials, so you may notice that um, I've got some speed dials. Um, people who I'm regularly speaking to on a regular basis, so I will probably um, pin those people in my speed dial list so that I can actually call them very, very quickly. Um, for me personally, I put my husband on my speed dial. He doesn't work in the same organisation, but I do call him a lot. Um, him and I um, do chat, so of course I pin his number in my uh, private contacts. And of course, you know, obviously, if I want to call someone, um, I can go in here, I can type the name or I can type up the number. Um, so here I will uh, ring a um, particular uh, number for me. And very quickly, I can click that calls button and immediately I, uh, a call is being made externally. So this happens to be a mobile number I'm calling and I can call that number and that person can answer. And of course, I'm then connected. Um, so that's that's what an outbound call looks like. Um, what does an incoming call look like? So let me just um, make an inbound call. And so you can see what that looks like. So again, very similar. Uh, you see a little pop up appear. Uh, you'll be able to decline the call or we can answer the call. If I accept the call, immediately I'll have the ability to uh, answer the call, speak to the person who's calling me. I can put them on hold. I can transfer them. Um, I can do much more um, with the call. So again, I can even record it um, and obviously um, uh, get transcription as well. So very, very useful capability i'm just going to hang up here but again very interesting i can actually stay in the flow of work um, and make and receive phone calls if needed excellent thanks for that tina i just noticed that uh at the bottom here it says about don't forward and jab take it jab as the headset you've got on yeah that's What's, right yeah what does the don't forward number bit mean Ah, so most people, when they have a phone, may have a little button called a forward button. Um, sometimes that button you could basically press to forward 
uh, to your mobile number. Um, what that means is it's just a capability that we have in a setting that allows you to um, choose to forward um, to your voicemail. So, for example, if you don't want to be disturbed, you can basically forward your uh, phone or fo forward your calls on Teams to your voicemail so that you you can be you can concentrate, you can kind of not get in interrupted um, and then you can obviously take that forwarding off. Um, Otherwise, maybe you have a colleague that you may want to forward calls to. So again, you can enable a forwarding capability. Um, say, for example, you're going on vacation and you want to make sure that your calls are going to get answered. Um, you can do that too. Um, or if you wanted to, you can go into the more settings. Um, there's a lot of features that are available in Teams that allow you to kind of be really clever. And, and be, you know, um, redirect calls. So let's say, for example, that you are going out on the road and you are going to take your mobile with you. And you know that, um, you know, you've got a car kit and you'll be obviously very safe in answering any calls uh, in your car. But, um, for example, you maybe find that the data connection is going to be pretty tricky uh, while traveling. So GSM uh, calls on the mobile network are going to be OK. Um, so what you can do is you can actually choose to have uh, calls um, sort of reaching out to your mobile number if needed. Um, or you can um, uh, set the settings that say, I actually want the call to ring for a lot longer before dropping into voicemail. So you've got a lot more flexibility Brilliant. to change around the settings if needed. So as if I think of some examples, um, I'm a retail manager, I'm in a store, it's quite noisy. Sometimes I might need my phone to ring a little bit longer so that I can hear that to, to pick it up. Yeah. Um, or I want my desk number to direct to my mobile number, my personal mm -hmm. mobile no number. Yes. I could do that. Or... Uh, if I'm feeling really lazy, I could just say, send all my calls to Tina because she's nothing to do all day. She should love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could do that too. <laughs> OK, brilliant. Great. I, I, feel, I feel great now. So, uh, so that settings box that you've got there is hidden under the three dots next to your profile picture. So in your case here, the, the MA. Um, just in general, if you do have not visited that settings box, for for a while so if you go up to the ma profile oh, yes. and that this is yeah, how i go to the ellipsis yeah yeah you go I usually go there. Mm -hmm. if you go there check out all those settings because we keep sneaking more functionality in there that people are not aware of so go in have a look um you can do things like decide who can pick up your calls on your behalf as well So I love all these settings, Tina. I can see there's a configure voicemail button there. Uh, yeah. What what's hidden behind that one? Well, this is this is this is probably one of the. Uh, this is my love, my best love feature. Um, so configuration, uh, configure voicemail. This um, most people when they have a phone, they get a voicemail. And just like you would on your mobile, you get a voicemail on your mobile as well. Um, but here it means that um, when they ring you and you're not available, people can leave a message for you. Right um, now here you can actually uh, record a greeting. So it's really simple. Um, when you click that button, what happens is you're ringing the system and it will basically um, there's a wizard that plays back to you to say, please leave a message after the tone and you record your greeting and you can listen to the greeting, um, how you sound. Um, and if you're happy with it, you save it. If you're not happy, you just re-record it. Now, for those people who may not want to hear their voice, um, you could, if you wanted to, not need to record a greeting, you can use um, text to speech. Um, and this set setting down here allows you to customize your greeting. So. What that means is that I can actually type a message and um, a voice in the system will actually record that greeting for me just by reading the text. I think that's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't sound robotic. It's quite a natural speech engine that Microsoft use. Um, so I love that. I don't I, I normally like to give people um, to hear not my voice, but they can hear the system uh, um, 
give out the greeting instead. Um, the other thing you'll notice here is we actually have an out of office greeting as well. Um, so what that means is I can actually uh, create an out of office greeting. Um, you can see here it's very generic. And again, uh, you notice at the bottom there's some settings here that says when I customize my out of office greeting, um, play it when I have all the time or when I have an Outlook auto reply on or when I have um, my out of office calendar event set up. Um, what that means is, is that I've been in a situation in the past where um, I've had to record a greeting every day um, or I have to uh, record a greeting when I'm about to go on holiday. Um, now, I've been in a situation where I've wrapped up my work, I've put my out of office on, on my Outlook, and I've headed out the door and then I've gone, oh my God, I've forgotten to record my greeting on my on my phone um, to tell people that I'm not around and to redirect them in a different location. Um, now, I wouldn't have been in the office and I wouldn't have been able to get into my voicemail. So here, because I've actually already set a custom greeting, it automatically trips over and will play that uh, out of office greeting because I've already put my out of office greeting or, uh, on my calendar. So the two are in sync. And that's I think that's amazing. It's one of the new features that came in in Teams. Um, we never really kind of connected up the voicemail and the um, Outlook uh, before. So that is a great feature. And I, I, I always show customers that because um, it's actually a, a really a great way of, you know, not having to remember and not worrying about yeah. making sure your out of office greeting, greeting is on. Love so, that. Yeah, love it. And you can choose different um, languages. So here, for example, ah. the lady will be English. But if, for example, you are Australian, let's just say, uh, or Canadian, you can have a, 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 a Canadian lady uh, or a, a gentleman uh, read out the greeting instead. So it just it customises the accent a little bit more. It's great for me because the amount of times that I've re-recorded my message uh and it's it's just not right so i can i can just put in exactly what i want to say so that's perfect also i've got a really strong northern accent so uh that can sometimes be troublesome so yeah <laughs> so win win for me i think yeah yeah exactly and the best bit is and I, and i think we haven't um shown here is that when you when someone does leave a, a voice message for you I don't have an example here is you'll actually get the transcription of the person that um, has left the message. So you don't even have to play it. Brilliant. You can actually see the message. Um, so again, yeah, we can we can um, we can probably uh, show that in another example. Yeah. Uh, later on in the series. Yeah. And th and that's something else that's a, a, a real win as well because sometimes I know when I get voice messages, depending on where you are you can maybe not play that voice message because you don't know what's yep. going to be said. So getting that transcript really helpful. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Well, Thanks, Tina. That's all right. You're welcome. So that brings us to the end of episode one of our Teams phone box set. And I hope you found that interesting. Our next session, we are looking to do something around personas. So uh, what Teams license and what functionality do you need for individual personas in your business? Uh, and what are the things that you might want to consider and the, and the features that, that you're going to get? So join us for that. We will post that on the YouTube. We've got a ton of resources for you, some great uh, resources in our adoption site, including a link to another YouTube channel that gives you step-by-step -step, uh, features and functionalities of, of, of Teams phone. Uh, so a great place to, to go and get started on that journey too. So please do join us again and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.